Greetings, loyal citizen. Friend Computer welcomes you back to Dungeon Complex. You may recall from our last mission recording that Gibson RHKD2, Love RBOY3, Mac RDOS3, and Bebop ROC1 went undercover to identify members of a mutant fight club and afterward Gibson RHKD2 was promoted to orange clearance and introduced to his new insect partners. We now rejoin Gibson OHKD2 as he begins to get acquainted with his new workspace. In this cubicle is a computer interface. There's two of them with two keyboards sort of facing opposite directions. So you guys can kind of like swivel around and view each other's workstation if you want to. One workstation is sort of designated yours and one's designated his. But usually you would have one of your clones assisting him and he would have one of his clones assisting you. But you would be running separate terminals. On each of these terminals there's a view screen that has surveillance map with little dots on it. It looks like a red clearance area. It looks like a red clearance map. It's in red color. And you're following these dots. Walk around. There are three dots labeled on your side and three dots labeled on James. Names aside. The, what are the labels? The names are redacted. From the dots, you can see that two of them are R&D facility. One of them is in the infrared zone on guard, looks like. You can switch between the maps, and uh, those same three dots, you're able to obtain visual through a, a, a screen right next to that. Uh, with a flick of a button, you could obtain visual on any one of those, either via the closest security camera, or all three of them also have what looks like a camera that works through their eyes. So at any point in time, you could switch on that camera as well. Although you're... So these aren't individuals being tracked. These are assets that we are gathering information through. Yes, but they're also being tracked. At least they have some sort of surveillance chip in them, so you always know where they are, and you can use their eyes as a video camera, as it were. You can passively watch any one at one time. So you have, you know, you have one screen that's a map, one screen that's a view screen. You can watch any one at one time. You can't watch all three at the same time, but you can alternate between the three. And you'll be warned by the insect officer, passively watching is usually fine, unless there's some interference. But recording which is what they mostly need you to do, is you find something good to record, I show you where the record button is, the red button next to the view screen, you hit that. Recording more than a minute's worth of material can cause headaches, can cause the user to pass out, things like that, so they warn you to not you know, record too much video at one time, so just get what you need and get out, uh, so you don't draw attention to yourself or cause problems in the mission. There is also, on the computer screen which you have access to data search, data analysis, there's also a directive input. Currently under the directive input on your side of the cubicle, it reads, agree with Gibson. So someone currently is on the directive to do to agree with you, apparently. You can, through typing, change this uh, directive at any time. As long as you have someone at this keyboard, you can. if it's you, you can do it. Or if you have someone up here, you can, of course, comm link them, get them to do it. Thing, as long as there's no interference, the directive will be received. And don't change it too often, or it can cause it to overheat and, you know, can cause a very malfunction, etc. Yeah. So, just, you know, do it sparingly. He's gonna leave you alone with your partner and off to the races, and he'll show the rest of your clones off to, you know, you still have one clone left with you, and the rest will go back to the, the dorms or explore the area around and stuff. But you're here for your first day of work in this new insect cubicle. So that, I suppose that we won't be doing our HPDA uh, NFC work anymore. Uh, you still can. You have that red. You're able to spy. You have that red uniform. If you would like to okay. leave one of your clones, you know, if so you just call have a little bit more in. leeway and also some new dudes. Yep. So as long as someone's there, as long as you have a clone in that office at all times, you, you're able to do whatever you like. As long as you fill your schedule there, you get a certain amount of rest and food a day. As long as you know, obey a certain right, print uh, computer let's protocols, you're fine. Let's screens and see who we can observe. Check my three dots. I'll check uh, outside sources to see who the fuck these people are. First dot pops up. Dude, it's R and D. He's be popping some pills after a long day of R and D, relaxing. He's just finished. Seems kind of bruised from some recent R and D activity, as R and D guys often are. Got beaten up by some. New invention. Okay. But he can't see himself. You can only see, like, just through his eyes. So you, like, hands and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you want to switch to the camera to watch? Yeah, I want to see, see who these people are. All right, so you switch to the nearest camera. Click, click. The, the R&D view screen of him getting his pills. It is the clone you know as Mac Ardos 3. Nice. How about it? <laughs> you want to check out the surveillance chip of the next person? Absolutely, I would. Click through the eyes. This person is the armed person. They're on guard. You see them doing the guard thing. You switch to the exterior cam to see what they look like. It is someone you have never met before. All right, what do they look like? Pretty beefy, not huge. It's a registered mutant that you don't know that you've never met. It's wearing a registered mutant armband. All right, and how about the second dot in R&D? All right, another R&D person. Needs to be taking it easy at the moment. Needs to be a female registered mutant that you've also never met. I'll leave three and four here. Give you some tap on the face now that we're not being observed directly by yellows. Yeah, we'll you guys look really fast friends. He seems like a nice guy, you know, after that mutant fight, you never, you never thought you'd see him again, but now that you have a shared office with him, it doesn't seem so bad. No. He jokes about how some of your troubleshooting team almost blew the mission for you. They're, they're a bunch of idiots. He has the same complaint about his troubleshooting team. You've noticed, at your cubicle, there is one button, a red button. 
it's not lit up right now, but it looks like it could light up and like flash. And over it is sort of like a glass cube, a dome that you'd have to flick open before you hit the button. And it says, in case of emergency, there's one on your cubicle and one on the cubicle across. There's an in case of emergency button. No explanation of what's it for or how it works. But in case of emergency, you've got a panic button. Hell yeah. And you leave the cubicle for a while to go do some shopping? Yeah, I'm gonna head to PLC to see what I can trick ourselves out with. Oh, you can buy a blaster now. Ooh. You can buy your own dock bot if you want. Have it installed in your dorm or have it follow you around. Field telephone, great for communication in all areas. Laser rifles are, of course, now able for purchase, which you already had access to from insect. Do I get to have my pistol and rifle upcycled to orange, or will I need to pay a fee for that? You have to pay to upcycle them. You will now be issued orange barrels, usually, unless you're being issued in a red barrel because of undercover reasons. If you would like to upgrade your weapon, you have to buy them yourself or be issued them through your job, but so far you've not been issued an upgraded weapon, no. Now, you could upgrade your weapon cheaper than you could buy a new weapon. I'll get it half price if you just want to upgrade it from red to orange, but then you would have only an orange gun, which would betray your undercover nature if you whipped it out. So maybe I should just buy an orange pistol to have yeah. and some orange barrels so I can just keep a mix of it. Mixing matches. Grenades you can still get, of course. Oh, Sonic pistol, Sonic rifle you can now get. The stun gun you can get now. Of course, all the same stuff from Red. Bouncy bubbly beverage, bullet horn, first aid kit, flashlight, gas mask, energy bar, hot torch, mirror, hygiene kit, smoke alarm, solvent or gum. And a thermos, all the same red clearance stuff. You are issued, of course, orange reflect armor now with your upgraded job and your upgraded uniform. But that doesn't look much different. And this is still silver. Just this tint is more slightly orange than slightly red. Okay, well, things I want to get from PLC then. An orange laser pistol, five orange barrels, a blaster, and a set of um, trench coats in orange for uh, me and the crew. Five of them. All right, trench coats will be 20 each. Orange barrels are 50 each. That's 300 for an orange rifle. So that's 550 down. You grab some things. Any other item procurement you'd like to do while you're here at PLC? Yeah, uh, let me pick up five grenades. Yep, 50 each. Alrighty. And those can be orange, red, or black. You have clearance to get any of those colors you like, so just mark which color of that you get. As for most things at these points, you can buy them in any of those three clearance three colors. colors. Yep. You gear up, check out the new digs, explore this orange sector. It's a little roomier, not quite as crowded, less people up here. View screens, a little more private, a little more volume control, one extra channel, sweet. Ooh. Even a wider variety of programming, including mutant fights. That is fantastic. Yes, it's time to hit up uh, the Illuminati. Don't I have an Illuminati contact? If you have an immediate superior, an immediate subordinate. So as you've just moved up the level, your immediate subordinate is still infrared. Your immediate superior is still somewhere here on the orange level. You've never met them though. They always message you secretly through vid screen or through other means, as you are wise to do with your subordinate as well to hide your identity, to not be discovered, exposed, and therefore have your underling have power over you. For uh, sure. You've never met the person that is your superior personally, but you know they are orange clearance. Some are up here with you now on this level and not so superior anymore. You can contact your subordinate, but you have to wait for your superior to contact you. Okay, well I guess I'll wait for that then. Uh, since I can't contact my, sub my subordinate, no, wouldn't really do it. You hang and slang and enjoy the rest of your time here in Alpha Complex waiting for your next mission? Oh, hell yeah. Alright, when you return to your dorm, you will find a note on the bunk that you have chosen for yourself. On this note, it says, Kill Love R. Please destroy after reading. Crumple up the note and shove it in my mouth. You chew and swallow this note. Yes, that's my Illuminati thing. Yes, so. And nice. you go about your life monitoring your three monitoring. subjects, monitoring doing your work. These, these people that I know. Well, one person that I know. Yeah. And two, and two that, that you I don't know. know. Enjoying your orange slop, getting used to their daily routines, sort of living your life until one day, as always, that call from friend computer sooner or later comes. You're called to another troubleshoot mission. Frank will let you know that you're being informed before anyone else is. You're being informed first because you're the highest clearance officer. You'll have to use the private yes. insect elevator, which takes you down to the red area into a room where you had that surgery. So it'll look familiar once you return. Secret elevator leads into that room, and then the door of that room is red, so it doesn't look like you came out of an orange elevator. No one's the wiser when you walk out of this red clearance door back to the red district where you recently lived. Familiar territory. And you're heading to the briefing room to meet the rest of your troubleshooting crew for another fun mission. Oh, hell yeah. So you're going to arrive to the mission briefing room first, be the first one there. You'll be greeted by the friendly computer wait screen. Love R B O Y 3 arrives first to the briefing room where you will find someone you know, Gibson R H K D 2. Hey, haircut friend. I remember you. Haircut friend. 
Here are some jauntily points love art and says, uh, what's the apps there? You know, doing the bidding of our great computer. That is precisely correct. The answer that I want to hear. How's Arm Services treat? Excellent. I have the best job ever. Everybody has the best job ever. Yeah, otherwise I, uh, wouldn't be doing it, you know, if it wasn't, like, suited to me. That's right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wonder what, uh, mm-hmm. other miscreants they're gonna have a pair of subways. Yeah, I'm interested to see how many people are needed for something like this. Whatever this is. Whatever this might be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're in a room, like, with the computer, right? There's a computer screen, but it says wait on it right now, but you could try to access it. You can always, you know, try to talk to a friend computer or get some through a comm link if you have one, those kind of things. It just currently says wait on the screen. If there's a computer in the room with us, I don't, I don't have anything else to say. So you guys just sit there in silence for, like, probably about another minute and a half. No, we're not. Sit there and stare at each other, and then you guys probably walk about the same time. So you'll see each other in the hall, you'll recognize each other, you'll see that you're walking towards the same room. If you want to say anything to each other before you walk in the room, you're more than welcome to there, Mac and Roger. You're the guy who shot me. Oh, it's going to be so great to work with you. Thanks! <laughs> <laughs> so, how was the day? You things are great. Really great. So great. And I'm really happy that things are going great for you. Hey, thanks. I really it's hope great that you want them to be. In your future. So you guys arrive at the door to the room you're supposed to be at. The red clearance room, so it's marked. You guys would like to enter together. After you. I turn around and walk into the room backwards. <laughs> smiling at him. <laughs> I'm and, giving him this and then overcranked paranoid smile. Twisting my mustache and then wiping my mustache with my little cloth. And then I come in and I'm courteous to everyone. Gibson uh, waves to both. He says, Hi, Matt Carr. Hi there, Robert. I laugh and say, What's up, guys? So you've all arrived, the wait begins to flash. The eye of the computer emerges on screen. I say, Burp, burp, burp. Greetings, loyal citizens. Your mission is to protect Inspector Claus ODON1 and his accompanying bots, and aid in any way necessary to ensure the new B3 product about to leave the factory floor for the first time. It's up to friend computers' high standards of excellence to keep every citizen of Alpha Complex happy and healthy. The remainder of this briefing will be handled by briefing officers Quimby OCON2, Ernst OCA T3, and Townsend OCOL1. Due to the sensitive nature of his mission, Insec will be monitoring your team for any traitor's behavior. Friend computer thanks you for your loyal service. After you hear that message, three orange clearance officers appear on screen. So they're on screen now, you see them in their outfits. One seems to be dressed in the standard Alpha Complex Army garb, but orange, so an orange level officer. Got all the, the, the markings, the insignia, but the, the standard Army issue garb. One of them seems to be dressed in a normal orange jumpsuit, nothing special. But the rest of his clothing seems very decked out. He's got an orange undershirt. He's a very fancily dressed fellow. And the third one is dressed in the boring office garb of the HPDMC, like very standard work garb orange. You can tell he's HPDMC from the style of orange garb. The, the computer introduced them so they feel no need to introduce themselves. Mm-hmm. They're just going to tell you guys what you have to do. Uh, you'd have to protect Klaus O'Don 1, the inspector for uh, B3. He's an orange clearance citizen, works for HPDMC, and will be sent with some bots to inspect this new factory for a B3 product that's going to be launched, and you guys just need to inspect the, the factory with him to protect, keep him safe, inspect the factory with him, make sure everything's up to snuff, no communists, no traitors, and keep him safe, basically. And possibly do a taste test of this beverage. You guys can handle all that. Of course you can, because you were assigned to it. So the computer thinks you're ready for this mission. So what they're going to do is give you an equipment list, which you guys will have to pick up from PLC and R- you go by R&D if you want to pick up anything from there. You guys have a member of R&D on your team, so they'll be able to get anything there you, you think you might need. But they'll give you an equipment list, they'll give you assignments, and then uh, after you get all your stuff, you'll meet back here, and there'll be a call button on the computer screen that you can call an auto car that will have Klaus and his bots in it to take you to an elevator to take you down to the infrared sector where this factory is. A lot of this information about this briefing may be above your clearance level, but don't worry, Klaus O'Don, the inspector, knows everything you need to know, and even if you have a team leader, he will probably be considered a higher, he's an orange level citizen, so his clearance is higher, so just do whatever he says anyway. And uh, any Im- relevant information will be downloaded into his bots, so you don't have to worry about anything, just follow his commands and his bots, you know, and you'll, everything will go fine. Those friend computers are going to keep you safe, you have nothing to worry about. Always. So, the first thing I'm going to do is assign you guys jobs, your mandatory bonus duty for this mission. Very exciting. Our team leader for this mission 
mission will be Love Our Boy 3. You're issued a team leader patch. You're now in charge of all decisions. Next, we'll do our loyalty officer. Gibson, get your loyalty officer badge, which you can affix to your clothing now. Gibson, you're in charge of loyalty for this group. All right. Next, we'll deal with our hygiene and happiness officer. Two-part job. Mac R. DOS 3. You've had some trouble with equipment in the past, so they're trying to switch it up for you. Less property damage possible in hygiene and happiness, so you're going to do hygiene and happiness on this mission. Which means Roger R. Run 3, you're in charge of equipment and communications and recording. Lovely. So you're all issued badges, showing your various duties proudly. Which you'll wear upon your clothes somewhere. Okay. Usually your chest or arm. To my, like, whatever this upper shoulder area is. Yeah, right on the chest there. Meh. And it fixes to your clothing. You can remove it at the end of your mission. You'll be issued a request form, which you, of course, <laughs> with team leader's permission, could add on to or whatever. And they've already expressed that your R&D member of your team, if they have anything extra they want to get from R&D, of course, they're always welcome to. That's kind of how R&D works. You have clearance. You can always check out equipment to test in the field as long as you're going to be willing to fill the paperwork for it. Um, and also, you're not in charge of equipment this time, R&D guy, so this might be a great time just to check out something weird if you want. But you are going to be issued one piece of experimental equipment you guys have to go check out. It's a PPRPT. You're given a slip for that. And of course, there's a space if you want to add any other R&D equipment. That's your R&D slip. It'll be given to team leader. A print out. Meh, 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 meh. PPRPT. Do we know what it does? Perfect. Currently, no. You can ask the briefing officers if you would like. I would love to ask the briefing officer what it does. If you'll give me like a bag for information, I'll let you do bootlegging. Okay, okay, Otherwise, okay, roll to beat your Hutzpah base. Oh, you're like, you're so awesome. Hey, hey, wow, you're an orange citizen? Wow, that's so awesome. I bet you're a really great briefing officer. Do you mind telling us what the PPRPT does? Because it's, I mean, of course, you as a knowledgeable orange citizen could give me that knowledge. You could enlighten my lower red existence. I rolled a six versus a nine. They'll let you know that the main purpose of you guys' mission, along with trying the new B3 beverage and all the and checking out the new factory, is the protection of Klaus Odon. He's had a, some, a series of accidents in the past. Someone threatening his work with B3. It's got an obvious enemy, and so this is something they've that's been designed by R&D to help protect him. It's a protective device. That's all they're willing to tell you. And once you get an R&D, you can have your R&D officer look over it, maybe ask for specs. But right, right now, you know, it's, it's a protective device. It's like a giant prophylactic for a person. They're also going to issue an equipment list, of course, for what you'll need for this mission. You get four red laser barrels, two comlinks, an ILTR1, one grenade, an SCS Model 6, clean sheen body cleanser spray, small red cloth, washcloth size, five easy does -its, three wider awakes, a multi-quarter two, a shoulder-mounted Klieg light, a multi-purpose toolkit, the MTK, and it seems to be a standard issue tongue opening multi-purpose toolkit, so your equipment guy, once you hand out this equipment team leader, it will only open for your equipment guy's tongue, it's already pre-programmed for your equipment guy. You have a specific set of tools, it's kind of big, it's bigger than the standard toolkit you would normally get for a multi-purpose toolkit, plus it's a very specialized tools. Do you guys want to leave the briefing room and go to PLC and R&D and get your supplies? Yep, briefing officers are done with us, we can head on our way. Yep, the room will be here, there'll be a, be a call button waiting for you in this room whenever you're ready to meet up with Inspector Klaus. Also, da, 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 da. it's Hector Klaus. So. There's about 50 people ahead of you in line at PLC today trying to get their various goods and services either for credits or for other troubleshooting missions. Unless you want to do something about it. Bad, it's definitely worse most of the time. So this is, it came at a good hour, but it's still 50 people you got to wait in line for. So you guys wait in line. 50 people go down. People line up behind you. You get to the front of the line of PLC. Have you guys added anything to your PLC list you'd like to request or just keep it as is? You guys need anything? I'm good. All right. They just need the tongue print of your team leader and equipment guy. All right, you guys give the tongue prints of approval. They'll also issue a form to you, equipment guy. In case anything gets damaged or missing on the mission, something for you to fill out. You know how. If just you, in case. Just in case. You never know. Something goes wrong. You might want to. So we know who's that accountable for. Goes so wrong. we know who's accountable for the damage and all that. So we know who to find uh, when, so why. Damaged or missing, and there's a place to it fill out what matter. what happened and why. You don't have to make anyone sign it. You can it just tell. You can just fill out what happened. Fault anyway. Yeah, I know, I know. You can always try to blame people though. It might add up to loyalty points on their side, or you never know what might come of what you report um, yeah, right. out of the game. I know it's not going to work out well fighting. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're an equipment guy, you're probably going to lose money this game. I uh, robbed just enough times that it was time to rob somebody else. So here we are. So yeah, you guys get all your equipment as issued, unless you want, like, so you want to add anything? More grenades. I look at the team leader. You think uh, we're going to need them? That's like, uh, look, we've had a problem well, with we, an explosion in a previous... We have to, have to protect Inspector Klaus by all means necessary. By all means necessary. We can't Who protect him with what, just one grenade. Who knows what may transpire. Yeah, I guess, like, if people start attacking him, that's a really good way to, like, create a distraction, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, like... We ought to flush out a nest of communist infiltrators. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So if, if one of those nests starts like running at us or something, we can totally just like obliterate all of them. It's like really efficient, actually. So this is a pretty, right. this is pretty smart. The what? team seems behind this idea. You want to add it to the list? How many commies can we get per grenade? Like, how, what's that's our goal? That's how of closely be? clustered the communists are, really. <laughs> are they are they standing together in a huddle? That's, that's you can kill them more that way than if they're spread out. So, yeah. Well, I guess if we have more than one grenade, we can. It doesn't matter if they're spread out. We can just like all the Wind commies in one. Yeah, this is pretty. So in case. There's commies, you need more grenades. How many more grenades do you want? You can even um, tie them together like a bolo. Have like three of them on a rope. Oh, and do that thing where you can like throw it and hit somebody in the leg and it wraps around their ankle and then they blow up. Exactly. You're gonna have to buy some plastic cord for that, but that's your call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or request right. it. You can always request plastic cord. I mean, this is a mission. They might improve it since you're on a mission. Word. I don't know how to really do stuff. I'm in the army, I know how to handle... Grenades? Like, stuff I've done, yeah. Tell me. I mean, loyalty officer, since this is re mainly gonna be, like, communist deterrent and communist erection devices, how many do you think that we should get? Two more. Two yeah. more? Where? Three well, Let's total. see if it gets approved. You're gonna approve two of those, so you'll get two more, get so two. three total. Three. Yep, and everything else in your PLC list, of course, has been approved by Frank Computer, and they have everything ah. here, luckily. They're not short on anything right now that you Where? need for your mission. So all this COVID is issued to you guys. And the tongue print has been given by team leader and equipment guy. So you guys are now officially responsible for it, and you can dole it out as you wish. Sure, that makes sense to me. Yeah, just jump in if something bothers you. Otherwise, equipment sure. guy, go ahead and handle that stuff out. All right, I'm going to give a red laser barrel to each of us. So let's see if we fruit it. Thank you. Out of the two of the three grenades, I will give one, of course, two to the team leader. Oh, no, I'm going to give one to the team leader, one to the loyalty office, and no, not them. I feel weird about him. Uh, no, no, wait, no. It's your I, I like him. I like him better than the guy who shot me. So yeah, one to him. Yeah, I mean they're <laughs> communist dispersants and. And there's devices, personal, so. there's personal vendettas, and then there's communists. You know. Well, I mean, friend computer matters more than our personal yeah. vendettas. Sometimes you get shot in the service of friend no, computer. This is all happening I mean, in my head. By yeah, the way. yeah, I, yeah, I know. You're not saying it out loud. You're, all you're passing this out like while you're nothing. thinking these things. Okay. Yeah. I like. I, I go. I move to hand it to uh, Mac, and then I go no. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep one of the grenades for myself. All right, I give one of the colleagues to the leader, and I guess I should keep one as an officer. Well, that was your job. Me. That way you can be in constant yeah. contact with the computer. Right, or, the alternately, you can even... switch it and have, be in constant contact with your clones. It's up to you, though. You have to switch the channel to do that, so let me know. Otherwise, you're in constant contact with the computer. It will monitor right, your mission. I uh, give the body cleanser to the guy. Hygiene. By the way, uh, my uniform today is spotless. Okay, right, that's excellent. Can we uh, walk and dole out this stuff and make our way to R&D to pick up our last thing? Let's get going. Let's yeah. get going. Let's get going. Okay, Mac yeah. knows where R&D is. We'll follow him. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's your R&D guy. He'll have the easiest right, time so getting in there. He'll probably be the fastest one to get served. You guys will probably get the runaround. But Mac knows where we're going to go if you let him do that. You've got a, Your equipment guy needs to be there also, of course. But if you let the two of them kind of deal with this together, they can probably oh, wait, finagle wait, around. Wait, I want to ask about the shoulder-mounted uh, right. Oh, that's just to help your, uh, it's, you mount it on the opposite shoulder that you put your, because it's a shoulder cam. You mount the light on the other shoulder, and it's just a bright light that shines in front of you. It does help for better lighting. Uh, the mission you're on, I mean, this guy doesn't know this, but it's for your, for out of mission sake. It's a B3 mission, so obviously a lot of, the part of your mission is marketing. They want all this footage. You need to record as much as possible once you're in the factory. They're going to use this for some reason. So just giving you a light so it looks really good. You're going to be down in the infrared sector. It's not quite as well lit down there. So you're, getting, right, you're getting a bright light so your footage looks good. But it mounts to your all shoulder. Right. Keep the, I don't think we really need the five easy. Uh, so I'll just keep the five easy dozen three wide awake. Because I don't think like, I'll just dole those out as needed. Can I have some of each? I mean, you're the team leader. You don't have to ask permission. Yeah, you can just ask me. Just... Yeah, I mean, I said that while holding my hand out. Can oh. I have one of each of those? Hey, you can have one of each of them. So you get one easy does it and one wide awake, and you let the equipment guy keep the rest of the pills. So I guess I will just make everyone happy with moral support. Yeah, and, and song. And apparently jokes. General, jovial personality. That's but where it goes, man. That's where it goes. And no one has any sort of vendettas against you. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> Mac anyway. is going to get, how about three of them? All right, three easy does it. Mm -hmm. And right. then wider awake, probably... You don't look tired in your group? I mean, I, I don't know. Not right now, but I guess I can keep an eye on everybody. Since you're loaded right, down no, with equipment, how about I keep the... I needs to be, needs to be pretty alert. I think he's, you know... I'm pretty alert right wants now. Wants to keep I'm all the happy bills. And excited about this mission, and I hope that you are too. Are you as happy and excited as I am? <laughs> I am incredibly excited. I don't think you're happy and excited enough. Let me hear you cheer. Cheer for Frank <laughs> Computer. Cheer. <laughs> This guy's angling for your job. I know. That's a... <laughs> he wants to keep all the pills. Maybe he should be 
happiness officer, maybe he would be more happy. Whoa, are you suggesting being happiness uh, officer? Team leader's prerogative. I'm extraordinarily happy with the way that things are going for myself, but that's self. Yeah, I much more good. appreciate a great group, conducive, synergy words that mean better things for a group. So if it makes him happier... This guy's been doing HBDMC happy. management seminar, I can tell. So would you like well, one of the wider awake? Well, I'm gonna so for the pills. We've got five easy does it. So you took one of them. So I had four, and I gave three to him. And you were questioning whether or not to do about the wider weight. I have two of those now that because you took one. Well, there are five total. So this is what is gonna happen with them. I'm gonna have one. Roger yep. will have one. Gibson, oh, Gibson, no, will have one. I don't know. I read, cool. I read that funny. Um, and then as far as you know, R. Matt can have two. All right. What's happening? And I doled them out as such. Right. And then for Let's the wider all... awakes, I'll have one, Mac will have one, and then Gibson R will have one. All right. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, let's take them all right before we start the meat of this mission and knock this damn shit out. That way you'll be fully awake and fully compliant the whole mission. I mean, we'll that's be right. ready for action, y'all. All right, so multi-quarter, obviously. That's, that's easy. <laughs> so no one takes their pills. Right, the multi-quarter, and then... I mean, the we're... guy's got that already, and he's the recording yeah, guy. Yeah, no, so. that was the only other thing on the list. Right? Tell me. There's a uh, small yeah, red washcloth as well. Clock, I hold it up to somebody's face. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Give him the small red cloth. That's the high day job. Mac Ardoss gets the small red cloth. Small I take out cloth. the cloth that I already own, and I wipe off the small red cloth with my cloth that I own. Uh, <laughs> the cloth that you own is black, so this is an upgrade. You have a black cloth now and a red cloth, although you have to return the red cloth at the end of the mission. That is true. <laughs> unless, unless you say for some reason it turns black and turn in the, the black one. Just let me know the end of the mission if you want to secretly, stealthily keep any equipment. Only person that would harm would be your equipment officer if you want to steal or keep any equipment. Just, like I said, let me know if you don't return equipment in the mission. <laughs> oh, easy clean body spray. Are you keeping that equipment, guy? I gave it to you. gave it to Mac already. Okay, so, or the clean sheen. It's like clean sheen body cleaner spray. Okay, so let me run this down with my, with my equipment officer here just so that we're all on the straight and narrow. I have a red laser barrel. I have body cleanser. I have two easy does it, and I have one wider right. awake, and I have the illustrious small red cloth. You know, what about like the uh, SCS do? Model 6? I have the quarter on, it's all on and stuff. I have the guy show me how to do it real quick. So you mount your shoulder light. Do you give the SCS Model 6 to the hygiene officer as well? The skin core sampler? Uh, yeah, I guess so. You give, I mean, ILTR, that's for your loyalty officer. Did you give that out? That's something Oh, no, 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 I gave that to the loyalty officer. Sorry, I thought it was... There's so much equipment. I mean, you can keep it. That's your more, equipment guy. More equipment you, than You can not give it to your loyalty guy unless the loyalty guy or your team leader complains. I, gotta, I, I just need to know. Me. All right, you guys head to R&D. You guys have a hookup there, so you guys can easily get the front of the line there. Bop, bop, bop. Your man, Matt Gard, knows people. Front of the line. I'm, Talk. I'm waving. I'm yeah. pointing and gunning. I'm doing my mustache thing. I'm licking all sorts of things. You guys will notice at, just... in R and D, Mac R. Doss is kind of a legend. He gets a lot of recognition when you guys get in R and D. He's like a celebrity there among that crowd. One of the people that was like happy to see him and like high fived him was like, "Cool man, that's Mac R." Like someone who seems to be uh, like in awe of him. And I walk up to him and be like, "Hey, friend, why is that guy so cool?" Hutzpah oh, base. If there's not a skill you can use besides Hutzpah base. Oh, natural <laughs> twenty. The natural twenty. The guy just laughs in your face and like he like he's, he's the fact that you don't know surprises him so much. He just like laughs just like, and turns you away. Know. You don't know who that is. Yeah, or he will never know what's going on in in, in R and D. So. Did that guy do like some sort of? Yeah. Like some sort of weird ass handshake. But other than that, you guys are very quickly given your PPRPT, which seems to be a flat metal disc, about three feet circular disc with a red button in the middle. It appears to be some sort of metal. Can I uh, quest the, the needed specs on that while we get that? You may roll me a Hutzpah base roll. Unless you have something better. If you want to data search on the computer, or you might find something else in your list of skills there you might have, but... Yeah, need a search. Yeah, you want to look it up? Just look it up the computer. The computer's got specs on everything. Good move, R&D guy. I got a three. That's lower than your data search, correct? Way lower, yeah. Oh, way lower. That's even better news. You're, uh, that means you, personally, are going to get these specs. You can share whatever you would like with the group. If you are getting these specs... For yourself on the screen, you can block it and just look at it yourself as a small screen that you're looking this stuff up on, or you can share it with the group. The PPRPT is a personal panic ready protected tube. It's an experimental device, 
So it hasn't been tested as much as it probably needs to be, but you place it at the feet of the person you want to protect. Make sure your feet are no more than shoulder width apart. Don't be straddling when you activate this thing, basically. There is a four-digit code, and the tube will expand around the person needs to protect once they press the red button and the four-digit code is entered. It basically works as an armor that protects against all weapons and reduces damage. So it's a portable shield, basically, to protect your valuable specter. Just the opposite. <laughs> there we go. What's the code? Do I know the code? The or code you can program whenever you close the tube. It's just it's a safety thing. That way, no one else can open it. You put in the code whenever the tube yeah, goes out. Like up. a hotel oh, safe. Okay, okay. Yeah, that way. Yeah, that way, no one else can get into it. If you're trying to protect so a certain. It's not a code to act to, to like actually use. It's a code for the, You set like, the code to make it protective that way nothing else, no one else can get into it. Yeah, you put in a code on the person on the outside puts the code in, the person inside presses on the red button in the middle it's like and then it goes up around them. Yeah, and that locks it and then and they're in there until it gets removed. And protected from all damage. Is it airtight? Totally airtight. Oh, God. Sealed up protected tube. Oh, no. You don't know this, but Mac does. That's all in the specs. And Mac can tell you whatever Mac chooses to tell you. At least yes, the basics and maybe. I take this and I hand that to the equipment officer. I, I, and I say I memorized it. So I don't print it out. And I say, oh, okay. And then I just hand him the, the, thing. The, the thing. And I say, there you go. Guess what? This thing is a personal panic ready protective. And now you have it. It's um, profile. Right. I look at it and I look at it and I go, well, it's from front computer, so it's got to be green. Okay. And I've tested okay. nearly everything that we have. Like the jet boot. And of course, you're here in R&D, Mac. You've tested a lot of equipment. You as an R&D person, you're allowed to check out anything else you've ever checked out in the past, and you're not an equipment guy this time, so someone else will be responsible if you check anything out. Is there any other R&D equipment you've had in the past that you would like to retest? This will look good for your normal job. Even though you're on a troubleshooting mission now, this will help you out and back at work. You may get a promotion if some extra equipment gets tested. And then barber bot takes everybody in. This guy disguises. Yeah. The rocket boots need more outside field testing. Let's we go haven't ahead. tested the Let's rocket boots in a while. Rocket. Yeah, they'll give you another pair of rocket boots to test. And here's the form. Your equipment guy's in charge of it now. So whatever happens, that's his problem. I mean, right. you, you'll, I mean, of course, as an R&D person, fill out a form about your experience as well. Um, but you won't be re- you won't be responsibly financially this time, just for a report R&D-wise. You've got, also got a pair of rocket boots that are easily issued to you guys in case you need them. So you guys take these rocket boots and this PPPRPT, leave R&D. You guys go back to your briefing room to call the auto car and Inspector Klaus and his bots to complete your mission. Any more stops before you turn back to the briefing room? No, I guess Nobody needs to pick up anything from their bunks or anything. Grab anything from the B3 machine or anything. You got time. You're walking through the hallways. I mean, I have some B3, I think, from, you know, my constant enjoyment of it. So yeah, everyone I has always B3. have some on me. Everyone's happy to return to the briefing room? Sure, sure, yes. All right, briefing room. You guys return to the briefing room. Door opens. You guys are all inside. I've just pressed the call button. Auto car is on its way. There'll be a map showing the Alpha Complex area around you and how close the auto car is to your location. It's sort of like an Uber pool. And Klaus is already in it with his bots. It seems to be a big auto car, mm. akin to what we'd call a limo. So it's a long auto car. Lots of space. It's style. So it's on its way here now. Let's get all the way in the back, guys. It'd have to be a big auto car if they roll a door in there. Uh, it arrives out just outside of your briefing room once you guys are ready to hop in. Everybody in. All right, you guys all pile in to the As automobile. As happiness officer, I'm just going to go ahead and suggest again. Let's go ahead. I'll take at least one of these wider awakes going to make everything a lot more groovier. At least no one will fall asleep on the everything mission. everything a lot more excited about this. This is like probably the biggest mission that we've ever been on. A lot of us are doing two rolls at once. Yeah, I mean, I can get behind this. Yeah. There are three wider awake, so why don't you guys go ahead and take those? I don't have one, though. I mean, you guys have got double. Here, you can have mine. Well, I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So everyone's got one now, except team leaders. Does everyone take their yeah, wider awake as instructed? Double I duty. I take wider awake. Don't worry. Water. You can afford water? That's okay. No, okay. Like, from the table? Jesus Christ. I have a oh, a B3. Do you buy a B3 or do you have one on you? Like, there is a lot of water. <laughs> And your foot locker, you want to swing by the door real quick and grab one? Yeah, I'll grab one. I'm All right. Pick that up real quick. So you guys have to swing by Roger R. Run's dorm real quick. Gibson uh, just palms his wider awake. He appears to take it, but it's lifted down. Ha ha, nice. I rolled an 8 out of 9. All right, so the way this game works, that will succeed on all NPCs. But if any PC would like to see you do that, you have to roll in the standard D&D fashion, which will be a D20 plus your number for that skill. And then everyone else has to beat that with their number plus a surveillance. I rolled a 21. So anyone else want to try to beat that? I don't, I'm not rolling. Yeah. So Gibson gets away with pretending to take the pill and use keeping your hand? No, I put it in the sleeve of my uh, trash can. 
So up your sleeve is a pill hidden. The other two of you, I take mine. you're wide awake. Well, Roger's well. wide awake. So the effects of that pill, you're going to get a plus four to all skills right now because you're super focused while you're hyper focused. The rest is mission, basically. But you're, you're not addicted. But if you stop taking this drug, you'll start having organ damage, although you're unaware of it. You're focused <laughs> as fuck. No the other two of you, you're just as focused as you normally are as you enter the auto car with Klaus Odon and his bots. Inspector What's Klaus Odon. Yeah, you're excited to meet him. He's dressed in the standard HPDMC gear, except it's decked out with B3 patches. He's got a friend computer patch, he's got a B3 hat. The other thing you'll notice about him is he's more cyborg than man. You'll see metal fingers, metal eye, metal plate in his head that seems to wrap up to the top of his head, although you can't see because he's wearing a B3 hat. His bots are both labeled with B3. He's got a war bot, which he'll introduce as Sophie. War bots, as you know, are like guard bots in Alpha Complex, heavily armed. You don't want to mess with them. They're heavily armored, heavily armed, better armed than most of the officers in this level, at least. And so he's got one of those, and he's also got a small pet bot he calls Gruff. It's a B3 branded rover. You guys have seen the rewards for B3. It's one of the things you can get if you click on B3 points. So wow. this guy's obviously collected at least 999 B3 points. Wow. He's got one of these cool rover dogs, cool. which is a B3 branded rover. It's got treads on the back, legs on the front, a camera mounted on front. It's got a can crusher inside of its back so you can record your B3 comments onto the bot and then it crushes up to 10 cans and then we'll deliver them to B3 for you so you can uh, stack up more points that way. So once you're that high up in the tier, you can stack up points That's using incredible. the rover bot. So this guy is obviously a huge B3 fan. He's drank over 999 B3s to get this bot. Damn, Klaus, you a pimp, yeah. And he's decked out all the fucking gear. Super shiny. So this guy's is this guy's in the corporate mindset. He's he's following the lead. He's he's, he's making money. He's doing he's you know, he's he's obviously up there. He's he's the inspector of the factories. Yeah, I'm into it. Although, obviously, he's had some trouble, because most of his body's been replaced by cyborg parts, and as you guys have heard, he's been attacked multiple times in the past. That's probably why he's mostly cyborg. But you've also heard his number is one. So although most of his body is cyborg, he's never lost a life. You know, his whole clone family's still alive, which is better than most of you guys are doing. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So he's got these two bots. You guys ride along the auto car to the relevant elevator that'll take you down to the infrared zone near where the factories are. And from there, you guys are going to have to hoof it. No auto car's down there, and the trans bots aren't really for this kind of a thing. You guys get down there and then so you guys get down there and then walk to the relevant ah. factory and just keep your guys safe as you're walking. Elevator goes down, doors open up to the infrared zone, everything's all black. You got your infrared workers covered in dust and smog and dirt. Obviously this is the, if they would get fine if they were anywhere else besides the infrared zone, but they obviously work in very dirty jobs and they won't get fine if they get near their door. Once they're near their dorms and they're this dirty, they would easily get in trouble from a security officer. There's not many security officers out here and stuff though, they're near where they work. It's a busy area, uh, lots of infrareds around, you guys kind of feel like push your way through the crowd. But they kind of part for you guys because you're infrared and you're, I assume, circled around Klaus and his, you know, there's a war bot with you. So everyone kind of gets out of your way. You guys seem heavily armed, higher clearance, you have a war bot. So uh, apart from the occasional slur from the crowd, yelled at you guys, you can't pick out who says it. You get called bougie from someone in the crowd. Get a job. As you guys head towards the factories until you get near the transbot magnetic track where there's uh, some repairs being finished up and some of the workers seem pretty agitated to have red clearance officers in this area. And you could you hear them grumbling under their breath. You don't really hear what they say, but you can tell they're talking shit about you. Their attitude changes when you guys come around. They start like talking under their breath, mumbling to each other as you cross the transport tracks. So you guys do anything about it or let them just be assholes because they're infrared and that's they got a hard life. They're not poor mission, so as long as they don't sound like they're plotting how to hurt or kill the inspector. Um, so you just keep your safety ball around. Alright, keep your safety ball around the inspector and head towards the factory. Follow the transbot. Magnetic tracks towards the factory area. The war bot, Sophie, will lead the way. She has all the mission information and knows exactly where the factory is, and you guys don't. You're not giving the information. The bot will lead to the factory, and the bot will open the door for you guys. And the war bot will stand guard at the door as you guys enter a B3 Cola factory. You enter in what order? Do you let Klaus go first? Wow. Or first or? No, no, no. We're going to do a couple God. people in front, and then him, and then a couple people with Sophie watching our rear. So, uh, how about our two wider? awake folks, why don't you guys go in? Well, you don't, well, well, you know all three of them. How about there. two of you wider awake guys go in first? Um, Whichever two. Which could um, include Gibson, as far as you know, he took it. Yeah, I'd like for Gibson and Roger to go in first. Your team leader, you give them orders. Yeah, That's Gibson cool. and Roger go in first, then the inspector, then followed by myself and Mac R. Dose, and then Sophie will keep an eye on the on our back. Right, you want to leave Sophie at the door? Do you actually get a good shot of you going in? Do you want to go ahead and, and light up the uh, multi quarter? You haven't started recording yet, as far as I know. The comic yeah, is I started, open. I, I said I started. I started. Oh, you did? I'm sorry, I missed it. Yeah. So you've been recording this whole time, your light's on. 
Now it's your infrared. I mean, if I did, if I did, then I'm doing. All right. Yeah. So you're recording. Lights on. Everything's going. So you've got this. All this is being recorded for posterity's sake. All right. Lights, camera, action, ladies. Yeah. Let's do this. Once you guys into the factory, especially, it's all official now. Everything's on. You guys pop in this factory in that order. You guys are now in a B3 factory for the first time ever. You see how B3 is made. There's all these vats, things being added to machines, like conveyor belts, there's infrared. People doing quality control, making you know, like just watching and counting and pressing a button if something goes wrong. We're basically, just watching the factory if something horrible goes wrong. And then the B3 is uh, gone through a line and then there's a red area, there's a red door and there's a, a window and you can see the room behind it is red and that's the testing area. You're just going to follow him around while he inspects yeah, we everything. Yeah, we're definitely going to stay close to him. It's Klaus R. You don't see any sign of laser pistol, no. Like you, usually you guys carry your laser pistol. It's pretty odd, obvious when you have a pistol and you don't see a laser pistol or barrel on him, no. But he's got a war bot which is kind of like being armed. Like he doesn't seem to be carrying a pistol, no. But he does seem to be an HP DMC guy and those guys aren't as weapon savvy as a lot of other people. Some of us are good with our hands, thank you. <laughs> We just like need to follow him because he yeah. knows what he needs to do. You just follow inspect. him from a piece of equipment to piece of equipment. Alright, so you guys are about to follow Klaus around the factory as he inspects each piece of equipment with the warbot and watch in the back of the room and his head by Gruff following close by his rover. You guys will follow to the first piece of equipment. It seems to be a, a vat or a different ingredients to make sense. There's gonna be several vats. He's gonna inspect the vats one by one. First vat, looking it over, make sure it's just doing its thing. He seems because of his cybernetics, what he does is he dips his finger in and does like a chemical analysis with his finger. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Inspector Claus, that's one of the benefits of being part cyborg is he can analyze the makeup of this these these batches with just his finger. Everything seems to be fine, up to a percentage wise at least, up to ninety nine percent it seems to be what it should be. Anyone do anything in this first vat besides Inspector Klaus? He just yeah. draws his pistol to keep Inspector Klaus uh, protected. I keep an eye on all the factory workers. You never know, factory yeah. workers yeah. sometimes are communists because yeah, it's, I uh, their hand in their pistols. pistols. I'm just surveilling, you know. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Never listen. know when workers might strike all of a sudden. All right, you get some good shots for B3. That's gonna go down your record. Yeah. Uh, so is this like yeah. a, a thing that's like next to the door? It's up on a platform. You guys had to go up on a platform for this. I heard they're doing a B3 drama. Since I'm in research and development, and also I just don't, I want him to also be happy. We're protecting him. I asked Klaus too. What you know? What sort of chemical imbalance are we looking out for? You know, like what goes into this uh, this work that you're doing right here? I may be able to use some of these chemicals later on in our own research and development. Who knows? Fast talk, maybe. You don't really need this work. You just want information. So yeah, I would allow yeah, fast talks. You're trying to like you're trying to get something out of this guy. I got a nat twenty. That's above your clearance level, citizen. Also, because of your nat twenty. He's gonna say, why don't you taste it? And they're trying to replicate the formula for old B3 the, in the black can. Now they got this new B3 coming out, they're trying to replicate the, the formula for the old because they've had an ingredient shortage. So if you want to taste one of the raw ingredients, go ahead and dip your finger in. And it seems like he's expecting you to do it, and he's orange clearance. I happily oblige. After do, cleaning your hand, right, first, hygiene officer? Well, I you, clean my hands before and after. Of course. Perfect. Gibson scribbles some notes. You taste the raw ingredient? And I don't put ingredient. it in my mouth, I let it drip into my mouth. Okay. And then I clean my little finger with the red claw. Nice. Like, dude, that would look better if you actually put it your mouth. Make a great face. So you film this and you want another shot because you're directing this film. You want a better shot is what you're saying. You I should, want a better shot. You should do it again. So do you do it again for your communication officers so we can get a better shot? He's zoomed in. You want to be on the marketing campaign, don't you? Don't you want to be in the film? I look at O'Klaus and see what he says. I'm looking away from them and uh, If it's good sure for B3, I, it's good for Klaus. I'm so. going to make sure that I'm keeping an eye on all the workers and I'm not watching these guys do this. Okay. So then I do that and thoroughly clean my finger and my mouth again. All right. So I've just had finger lips too. Yeah, two finger lips. There's some drips of some raw ingredient. It tastes nothing like B3 at this point. It's definitely a raw ingredient. Make a good face. Make it look like it tastes good even though it's kind of bitter. I like pucker my lips and I'm... It's bitter and it drips very slow. I go B3 like class. Bam! Oh, that's a good take. That's a good take. That's Over a, my shoulder, good for your like, reel. Good job, guys. Good footage. Now I'm excited for this new B3. Well, new B3 classic. So it's a new old B3, but yeah. yeah. the new old B3 is going to be right. the best yet. Classic. It's like vanilla, it's like vanilla Warcraft, man. It's going to be so awesome. Yeah, it's, it's like, like original yeah, flavor. Yeah, Wait a minute, communist. What does that mean? Oh, see. It's not a flavor you have clearance for yet. No, no, no. That's a... That's your one. So, is the inspector done with this particular section? Or we this on? this vat's done. You guys can move on to the next vat. All right. I'm looking around. Everybody's still good. Do I need to do like perception? 
Can you scan? There's no protection this game. Or? But you will notice that Inspector Klaus, his cyborg legs and arms, he seems to be adjusting to them still. And the second vat, he seems like he's clumsily about to fall in. Do you do anything to prevent Klaus from falling into the second vat? Yes. So our formation is probably still the one that we walked in with, but the two of them... You're up on a platform now, so you're probably like in a, like a semicircle around him, because you can't be on both sides without being in the vat. Okay, so we're all like just in a... You're up on the like platform. The same distance and everything. Yeah, you're probably about a meter or two away. You're probably pretty, pretty close. What I'll do say, do you need help? I'm getting the best shot of people saving me. Alright, so you're ready. You see it about to happen, you're like, I'm gonna get a good camera angle on this. Jason will try to stop him from falling, I guess. Yeah, probably strength. Strength is easier one, because there's no base for that, right? That's why you can just, like, roll any fucking number you want, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's under a number. Yeah, okay, you can roll strength, I'll allow it. You're just trying to grab him. I rolled a uh, one. Oh. <laughs> So you grab hold of the shoulders of Inspector Klaus, make sure he doesn't fall in. Lock him down. You get a nice, like, tight shot of Gibson doing, like, the nice loyal citizen thing, protecting an inspector from falling into a vat. Yeah, I pat him on the shoulder afterwards, and I say, uh, better keep your, uh, head on the, or your feet on the gantry there, Inspector. Do yeah, I'll do the best I can. Before we move on to the next vat, could I use my power just to see if I can see when this is obviously going to go awry? Like, oh, of when course. the bad shit's gonna happen? Yeah, you can roll a power roll. Um, you can give me a time frame for be, I guess. So you want to like look at least up to the stairs. Let's go to the next two new vats. vats. Let's say for that I'll, I'll charge you two power points. So I'll give you one point for every incident we have to go through. It'll be a flawed power. On the next vat, Klaus's leg is going to act up. He's going to launch backward into your team leader, knock your team leader into a vat. <laughs> So you know that's about to happen. And you also know on the stairs, also Don's going to tumble and take someone down with him. You can't tell who. That's kind of, but it could be any one of you going down with Klaus down the stairs. Very clumsy cyborg. Yeah, man. So you know that as you guys approach the next vat, which he's also going to test with his robot fingers for chemical analysis up to a 97, 98% test rate. Beep, bop, boop, boop. Testing being okay. done. You see team leader standing right behind him in the formation you guys are in. While he's testing this, I suggest that our equipment officer get in behind the team leader in order to get a really good shot. We've got me licking finger. Need to get a really good shot of Klaus, you know, really doing the groundwork on this. I wouldn't be able so to, he's to get, if I was behind the team leader. He needs to get, you know, in between the team leader. So in like front right, of the team leader, but behind Klaus. He needs to get, like, overhead shot Why would I right behind of you Klaus. You hear this whole argument while Klaus is doing the thing? Like, yeah, hold right the camera Klaus over the inspectors. Shot. Like, hold the camera over the inspector's head to get, like, an overhead shot of what he's doing. Can I do that, please? Right team leader's promoting it. I mean, it's a shoulder cam. You can hold it up high with two hands if you wanted to. Well, Your Klieg light might stand, get in the way a little I'll bit, but... Stand well, help you steady the camera. So, all, uh, so, while I have the so you want on my hands to make sure. team leader behind you guys, and then Mac, and then Roger, and then Klaus, in that it's order. Like in a straight line, basically. Right. And gives it to the side. Unless you want to move. Camera guy, I'm helping camera guy steady. The... Yeah, I mean, I don't need to be in their way for this. I'll get it. I'll stand to the side and get out of the way. Thank you. Why would I, I? I don't know why. I, I mean, I, that's a little bit out of the way. Number one, I, I don't know. I think that would be a great shot. I feel like, like I, I have to use this. Has the mission already yeah. taken a toll on you? Might need it. He does. Klaus comes out of the vat, looks at his finger. There's a flashing red light on the side of his arm, and he goes, "Huh?" And then, like rocket boots, his feet light up with flame. So his boots light up. So you have to either roll something to get out of the way, or get hit by this guy getting launched back towards another vat. Put him onto the ground. I'm gonna make sure he doesn't fall back into the vat. You need help. Awesome team leadership. Uh, while everybody's distracted, uh, I am actually going to call link one of the other members of my clone family. All right. So what's your quick message? Uh, switch to disagree vehemently. Well, stealth for you that time to keep that secret. Twenty-seven. Oh, 22. All right, I rolled a natural one to uh, make sure... To tackle him? Bad. You're able to prevent the accident from happening. You tackle him and you, like, roll, and you, like, halfway off the edge about to fall into their vat. So it's like a thing where you're about to fall out of bed. You're, like, inches over the edge, just barely holding on. You can roll back into the way. You've saved Inspector Klaus and yourself from falling in. All right. And I go, that's going to make great film. I'm going to be really excited about this. Super happy. All hail print computer. He allowed this to happen. Camera tumbles out of... Roger's hands. Does anyone do anything to save the camera from falling in the vat while he rescues Klaus? Do you need help? Remember, friend computer is always willing to aid a loyal citizen. Remain loyal by listening to the next episode of Dungeon Complex.
episode of Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater was sponsored by our fans and friends on Patreon. Donate today. Keep Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater alive.